and she can hear you. I don't know if you just want to, we got to figure out how to do the, the switch of things, because if we're both on, it echoes. So. What? We're good. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, Tech Talk Tuesday with Scotty Too Hottie. Scott is the um, motorsports director for Premier Lubricants, and they are representatives of Sunoco and Champion Products. And tonight we are going to discuss uh, basically oil for diesel engines. So, Scotty, take it away. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Welcome back. Um, there's been a few questions this week um, on some of the uh, Engineering and Petroleum Society. So we're going to you know, start with that. But tonight's topics, we're going to uh, look at a couple products. We're going to look at a Sunoco 2050 diesel engine oil. And we're going to look at the Champion Classic Blue Flame, which is a 1540 uh, high performance diesel oil. And uh, before we do that, we'll get into uh, TBN, the total base number, and what that means and how that refers to a product data sheet and how years ago that number was important for selecting a high quality diesel engine oil. So um, with that said, we'll try to move along and not be as long winded tonight. But uh, the first thing is we had some questions during the week about um, some of the vocabulary with these society um, groups like engineering, so like API for one, but I um, thought we'd just go real quick for them because you see these more and more every day because I'm like 10 years ago or even five, we're seeing more spec oils uh, and not only in the States here, but European spec oils are becoming uh, more and more popular. So uh, we're going to just go through this list pretty quick. And if anyone has a question, you know, please stop us or Doug, let me know. But uh, so the first one is uh, the ACEA, which is the Association of the European Automobile Manufacturers. The second is AGMA, which we're real familiar with. That's the gear. So that's the American Gear Manufacturing Association. So if you were to look at um, any product data or a viscosity chart, you see the AGMA uh, gear ratings on, on that chart. Um, API, which is the most popular that we would see or everyone will see is the American Petroleum Institute. The next one is uh, the ASTM International, and uh, that's actually a test uh, engineering group. So that's Good. Um, American Society for Testing and Materials. So you'll see a lot of times the test measures for oil or like especially in the diesel world, it's good for, you know, John Deere, so to speak. They have the ASTM um rating or the you know the uh, test measure so to speak that's that's how they find that ema is the engine uh, manufacturer association the ilsac we talked about last week that is the equivalent to the api uh, in europe it's the international lubricant standardization and approval committee so basically that's like i said api does all the american uh, specs and then over in Europe, it's the ILSAC does that. Um, one that we're starting to see more, and if you ride motorcycle side by side, um, wet clutch stuff, so it's J A S O. That's the Japanese Automobile Standard <coughs> Organization. That that group started years ago with motorcycles, and of course, we're starting to see a lot of um, like Toyota, for instance, and some other manufacturers into these 1.5 liter. Uh, engines that are hybrid that have, you know, EV assist. So that's where you'll start seeing the JASO spec. And also um, LV or ULV is um, ultra low viscosity and low viscosity. So those things are coming to uh, the forefront very quickly with the smaller engines. Um, L NLGI, uh, that's very familiar with everybody. That's the National Lubricating Grease Institute. So Right on your grease, you know, number two, number one, zero, zero. That's the um, institute that, you know, measures and does the specs for grease. Um, this one's new within the last years in the marine industry. It's the NMMA. It's National Marine Manufacturer Association. That group got together 
and with the new um, EPA regulations and a lot of boats went to a catalyst to burn cleaner. But what they found is they run a lot hotter as they, you know, just by uh, nature of that design. So um, the NMMA came out and actually um, they're responsible for the marine specs for like your, you know, Yamaha, um, Mercury, you know, Volvo, all that stuff. So um, SAE, we see quite a bit um, around, you know, the garages and farms, that Society of Automotive Engineers. Um, you'll see that a lot for on viscosity, like your crankcase uh, ratings and stuff like that viscosity. So, but uh, that's, that's a general list of what you see a lot. And some people were asking questions about, you know, API and things of that nature. So, but uh, any questions, Doug, on that? I can't see that on my end. We haven't got any yet. Kenzie is uh, on the backside helping me. Everybody knows how technically advanced I am. So she yeah. is running the computer tonight. You know, Mr. Schultz is in Florida. Lucky, lucky Jason. cocktails right now, I'm sure. So nice. Um, well, we'll move right along then. So the the next one we'll get into is just the uh, category of commercials. So that when I say that the CK4 is the current diesel engine oil spec. So basically the C means commercial and if you uh, were to look at your donut or your fill cap uh, so to speak on your equipment it's it'll have right on there the oem spec so um right now uh ck4 spec was uh, introduced to the world and marketplace december 1st of 2016 and basically c means commercial and if you went to the gas side you see SN is the current one and, and S is for service or service vehicle. So an easy way to remember it uh, for me, it works for me. It might not work for everybody, but if you can reference that C as, you know, combustion, um, you know, or commercial, it, it stands for commercial, you know, combustion, you can remember diesel. And then the K, which is the second uh, reference letter in the spec, that is the current, um, newest version. So when they first came out with the specs, it started out as CA. And then as they improved or had a new specification come out, it went up a letter. So it went to CB, CC, you know, CD and so on, all the way up to the current spec of CK. So CJ4 was um, basically the, I believe the longest running that was introduced um in 2010, if I'm not mistaken. So it had a long run. And really the only reason they came out with new oils technology changed and they were trying to accommodate, you know, filters and, um, you know, emissions and clean air. And basically with the new low sulfur fuels and, you know, they had to put different detergent packages in there. So so well, that's basically what the change is, is detergent packages? It, it is the chemistry, and it, it's really based on uh, the Clean Air Act, you know, just trying to clean up, you know, the emissions. So um, the important thing is, and well, the, we'll get to the four. So the four represents four stroke. So that's what that means right. in the spec. So the most important thing for everybody is, when they design a new oil, they're they're almost 99% always backward compatible. So you don't have to worry like, oh, my goodness, they just come out with a new oil. What am I going to do? I'm not going to be able to use it in my, you know, 1999, you know, farm all or, you know, tractor on the farm or combine or truck or, you know, they're, they're almost always backward compatible. Um, the only uh, oils you have to really notice is specific to OEMs today is like your FA4 you know, those oils, which aren't on here, but um, those are basically fuel economy. And <clears throat> excuse me, when they have a fuel economy like that FA4 or fuel advantage, they build that oil on the very low end of the spec. So most of those are 1030 synthetic blends. Those are built towards the low end of the spec just for fuel economy. Um, basically, it's coefficient friction. There's The thing is, if you're swimming in honey, or swimming in water, there's less resistance. Same thing in an engine, diesel engine. 
they built it down on the low with the tighter tolerances, you know, there's less friction is that cranks whipping in there. So, but um, the CH4 and uh, the CI4 are very common for in the 90s. And also uh, what's important about them is those are the oils that in the pulling world, um, as far as diesel engine oil, we're not talking racing oil, we're talking diesel engine oil. Those are the uh, spec oils you want to look for. So in the 90s, they had a really uh, good zinc package, and, you know, and that was with the antioxidant. And also they had uh, a good detergent package, but it's nothing like today. Um, they flip flop like we talked last last week. You know, the oils of today, you know, in diesel or heavy duty engine oils are referred to HDEO. They have lowered the zinc package parts per million and increased, you know, the um, uh, detergents and dispersants and all those additives that control soot and acid better. So, but the two oils that we're going to get to tonight, the one Snoko and the one Champion, um, those oils are both CH4, uh, what we would call old school, but those were very good oils back in the 90s that could really take, you know, high shearing, high load for towing, pulling, you know, really the workhorse of the diesel world back then. So, but uh, if you notice on that, um, you know, document that's up on there now, you can go back. So the bottom one on the very bottom, it's highlighted there, CA, uh, when they first came out with the diesel engine oil spec was in the early 50s. And then, you know, as you go up, as I say, that second letter was, every time they had a change, they, you know, became a new ladder. So um, like your, your CF2 and CF4, they came out with a, with a basically, the two represents two stroke. So when you see the four, it's four stroke, the two is two stroke. And um, that was in the nineties, you know, to cover all the bases, but like, like CJ, uh, excuse me, CG4, CH4, those were all in the mid nineties. I mean, CG4 was, introduced in 95 they came out with a new formulation in 98 that was a ch4 you know and then that lasted till about 2002 and then ci4 came out um in 2002 that was about eight years new standards come out for cleanliness and epa regulation then cj4 was cj4 is probably the longest runner um it was around for quite a while so so in the in the 90s there was a lot of advancement in oil does that have correlation with synthetics uh more correlation with um egr and filtration and uh and now current you know diesel particulate filters and all the filtration stuff the goodies that you know help clean the air you know the exhaust coming out the seat you know the carbon monoxide and uh nitrous and or, you know no2 i guess but in the other thing too is as they changed fuels and cleaned up fuel and went to these low sulfur fuels, um, you know, in that diesel engine, it's very robust and it's it's such a harsh thing because the fuel with naturally wants to cause acid, you know, with soot, you know, when it gets dirty, just to keep it to the basics. So the newer oils are just the technology, their formulation with the chemistry, um, you know, with the, you know, detergents, dispersants and soot control, you know, antioxidants, stuff like that. It's really, um, to keep that oil clean and the filtration, diesel particulate filters clean, you know, so we had this conversation earlier. I had a, I had a, a customer call up about 1540, you know, for basically it's a construction, you know, um, dump trucks and they have a cement business. And I said, you know, they all want to shop on price. And I said, well, let's, let's just talk about this for a minute. I said, I want you to focus on 1540. That's the viscosity. I said, just pin that up on the board in your mind. You can get five different varieties or good, better, best premium in 1540. You can get, you know, conventional, you can get heavy duty, you can get premium, then you jump up to, you know, synthetic blend and then you get full synthetic as your premium. So, you know, good, better, best. So they're all 1540s, but they all do something 
character, you know, characteristically uh, different based on your application, you know, so a couple things, uh, you know, pulling is a whole different animal, but when you're on road, off road or fleet, um, the number one thing that kills diesel engine oil is idle. And maybe you could argue startup. I mean, those are the two harshest things that kill diesel engine oil, you know, de um, just degrades and degradation, you know? So, um, you know, if you're running over the road, you can run your oil a lot longer. I mean, I have customers who run 75,000 mile oil drain intervals. They do filter, you know, obviously changes and stuff like that. But um, if you're running garbage trucks and school buses and dump trucks and stuff like that, where you're sitting idling or short runs or, you know, just dirty, uh, you know, you're only going to run anywhere from 5,000, you know, miles to maybe 15,000 if you're lucky. No. So is that that the, the startup and the idle, is it because of lack of operating temperature? Is that part of it or can you explain uh, that, what causes that? Yeah, so a little bit, that that's one equation to it, but it's just, it's the dirtiest. It's not getting heated up and, you know, letting that chemistry really act, you know, the molecules do do their thing. So it's, it's really kind of just sitting there and just, it, you know, produces, you know, more soot you know, when you're idle than if you're, you know, up and operable or, you know, like with a farm tractor, you're running wide open or equipment, you know, that oil's, you know, working and shearing and coming up to temperature molecules act different and different additives. So, but in startup, of course, you know, that's harsh on anything. It doesn't matter if it's a passenger car, you know, race car, boat, whatever. If you're cranking that thing over, you know, there's limited oil that's getting to it. So that's your biggest wear factor is startup, you know, but today's modern engines, that's starting to be not as severe because of the designs. And, you know, when we used to put carburetors on everything, you know, it took a little longer to start stuff up, but this direct injection and, you know, the fuel injection and all that, I mean, things fire up so much easier today, you know. Right. But uh, any questions on that? No questions yet. Okay. Feel free to ask if anybody has a question. So we'll go to, um, you know, what is TBN? You know, you see this and a lot of people, you know, some know, some don't know, or it's like that number. You see it on like the product data sheets. You see it on lab analysis reports and you see TAN. So, you know, what is TBN? What is TAN? So TBN is total base number years ago. Um, they used to rate how good an oil was on the, the TBN number. So the TBN number ranges from two to 15, the highest. So years ago, and even today, like your railroad engine oils will be a TBN of like anywhere from nine to 11. So, um, over the years, you know, the, the TBN basically, is a representation of the additive package that neutralizes acid. So the mindset was years ago that if I had a high TBN of, you know, 10 up to 15, you rarely ever see 15. That's almost, you don't see. Um, that would be a good oil because, you know, they sold it on the fact that it's going to neutralize and your oil is going to last longer because it's not going to be acidic. Now today, you, you can't go by that. There's so many, you know, different oil analysis tests. So with an engine, it's just like a human body like us. You know, if you've got bad habits like me, like to drink Jack Daniels and eat pizza and nachos and hang out with the beer money people at these events, you know, we're not the best eaters, right? That's right. So, but, you know, the older we get and even younger, we do a blood, you know, we get blood work done. Your blood is your lifeline and it tells the story of the condition for the, for the most part. It's the same thing with an engine, no matter what you have, pulling tractor, industrial, you know, cat, dozer, blah, blah, blah. Um, an oil analysis is the uh, bloodline or the blood sample or heartbeat of that. So it's important to do that. Um, the nice thing, if you do oil analysis, it can really, the reports you get can really tell you a story. It's more like a proactive thing, if anything's going on in there by the report you know, metal particles, or if you have water, you know, viscosity drops off. Those, 
viscosity is the number one indicator of an oil for no matter what. If it drops, you know, up or down on an oil analysis report, a red flag should come up. Something's going on. You know, you choose when you're choosing an oil for any application, viscosity is the number one uh, starting point that you look at. So. So what, what are characteristics of a problem if your viscosity increases when it's in the motor? Yeah, What's so that? that's a great question. And, and with, with <coughs> diesel, because of the soot, normally in a gas engine or a racing engine or alcohol, when you get blow by or fuel dilution or your oil gets depleted, maybe heat broke down the additives, typically your viscosity will lower as it gets but when you go over the diesel world, there's some cases where because of the soot and the acid and it can skew the testing, sometimes you can have higher viscosity. So, you know, you got to know where your, your benchmark is, where you start, you know, what, what flavor, like if you run at 1540, you need to know where that, you know, starting point is. But when uh, diesel gets dirty, it can do some strange things, how they test it. So, but um you know, the total base number is basically represents like the quantity of acid, you know, in milligrams, of basically potassium hydroxide, you know, that requires the additives to neutralize it in the oil. So, um, you know, the function of the detergents in the oil really boil down to two things. So it controls deposits in the hot parts of the engine, such as pistons, turbochargers and bearings. And, um, it also neutralizes, you know, the acidics or the acids from the combustion from the fuel. And that's corrosive. So we, we talked last week a little bit and I don't, there's no right or wrong rants, uh, wrong answer. You go to pulling. There's a lot of um, pullers, especially in the bigger tractors or bigger clearances that run like a straight 50 or a straight 60 racing oil. And, you know, it has a lot of zinc in it for starters, but also, you know, to maintain some, you know, your oil pressures, you got to go up in viscosity, you know, or, or you're going to have some serious problems. So the problem is, and well, it's not a problem because those guys are changing their oil frequently. You know, you, the soot and the chemistry of diesel fuel and everything that's going on, um, when it dilutes into racing oil, there's no dispersants or, or the detergents that are heavy in a racing oil. So it just makes that oil clump, you know, and it gets abrasive from the soot. So it, if you change it frequently, what they do, you'll never have a problem. If you are running it or you're, you know, say you want to have a little more coffee money during the week or get a pizza and you're going to run your oil extended, you're probably going to run into some problems at some point, you know, not right away, but over time you're going to, you know, obviously embrace, if it's abrasive, it's like sandpaper, you know, but, um, so that's the big difference. But now the TAN or TAN is a total acid number. And that is actually what you would see on your oil analysis report. So if you, you know, took a sample out of your truck or tractor, you just want to see, you know, how things are going. If you're having some bearing wear or anything going on in there, you would uh, see with the diesel engine oil lab analysis report TAN or total acid number. That's super critical because, you can tell by that number, uh, the life of, of that oil, how it's degrading, you know, it's cause it's acidic basically. So it's basically to summarize, it's just telling you basically how much acid is in your oil. So. Is there anything in an oil analysis that would indicate mechanical wear on the acid side of things, or is that not affect that? kind? Yeah, of thing? no, we, and we can have a night of just uh, lab analysis, which would be good because um, you know, a lot of people send their stuff out to the lab and they'll get a lab report back. That's real nice. It's got, it's like, whew, I'll be honest. I look at them like, man, wow, this is freaking nuts. Like, how do you read this thing? I'm not a petroleum engineer or chemist. Well, they go by, basically people look at it and it's like, okay, it's green, yellow, or red, you know, green means everything's okay. So that's cool. Even though you maybe not know what the vocabulary is. And then Yellow is, hey, it's okay, but it's starting to have an issue. So, you know, take a look at it. Red is critical, so you have a problem. So the things that, like I said earlier, they'll be important in that would be like if the viscosity drops off or increases, you know, and it's, and it's flagged red, 
that's definitely a problem that the oil is depleted or it's it's wore out. You know, other similar stuff is like, you know, if it's got aluminum, uh, you know, metal particles they look for, they look for water, you know, so if you have water, you know, a lot of times, you know, we know where that comes from, but, right. you know, different metals in, in the engine is, you know, especially if you go off the pulling track and go to like your on-road, off-road, it's, it's incredible what that'll tell you. Now, the cost of, you know, equipment today, if you have a good lab analysis program, and are proactive, you can actually increase the value for resale of your equipment or, you know, mechanical, you can have trends like, okay, hey, we need to start doing a little bit of maintenance on, you know, piece of equipment 101 out there. So, but it's, um, I recommend to people, you know, if if it's not a habit now, even if you did it once a year, um, get a benchmark. And when you send a lab analysis into any third party lab, you know, send a little eight ounce or, you know, a lot of them will tell you what they want. Take that virgin oil and send a sample right in, you know, with your used oil. So what they'll do is they'll do a report and tell you how clean or, you know, the quality of that bait, you know, your, your oil. And and it's good to know because that's your benchmark. And then from there, you know, you send in your used oil and that'll tell the story. It's like, Oh, you know what? Something's going on. Especially if you're losing a bearing or something, Right. It's super critical. It can save you a bunch of money. You know, if that thing, if you can save an engine or, you know, in the pulling world or any world, but in the pulling, especially the cost, if you can save an engine from, you know, premature failure, that's huge. Especially today, because parts, you never know. Some parts, if you break, you might be done. You might be sitting for the rest of the season. You never know. Right. So, but there's plenty of test measures on uh, lab analysis. And, we'll, you know, we'll take a night. I'll uh, make a note of that. And we'll, we'll dissect a lab analysis report, um, you know, on both. We'll do one night with just racing oil or, you know, your pasture car motor oil. And then we'll do another night with just diesel because there's very uh, specific characteristics to both to look for in that. So, so but, which product do you want to go through first? So let's do the um, Sunoco 2050. So the Sunoco Fleet 2050, and, you know, when you go into the pulling world, especially diesel, you don't see all the time, you know, it's a high-performance racing oil or it's a high-performance this. Um, You know, a lot of the diesel oils are, are, are diesel oil. So the nice thing is, like, over in the racing side, they sell and market racing oil on high zinc, the phosphorus, calcium, all the additive packages for that. When you go to diesel, um, a lot of these oils, you know, like this is a 2050. It's just a, a, you know, basically a high quality diesel engine oil that's made for that condition. So in anything in, in, in the lubricant world, you know, you want to have like, have the mindset of light chemistry. So if you're running, you know, diesel fuel, the best, and I'm not saying race is wrong, but the best thing is light chemistry is diesel engine oil. You know, if you have a shop and you have parts and you're, you know, using honing oil and stuff in there to wash that off. Yeah. A water soluble, you know, you know, water cabinet will work and take off honing oil or cutting oil But the preferred chemistry is actually a solvent base because, you know, it's petroleum based, you know, your solvent. So not saying it's wrong, but I'm just throwing out that scenario. There's there's a couple ways to do things. But like chemistry is always, um, if you can, a preferred method, you know, match that chemistry with what you're doing. So the 2050 um, is a CH4. So as we talked earlier, that was from the mid 90s. It was a very... Um, high quality, robust oil. So it was built for like, you know, heavy pulling, you know, just a workhorse, you know, it can handle oxidation and the shearing of oil and soot control for that day um, back in there. So this, this would be really a good uh, choice for, you know, the diesel pulling truck and tractor. So I know, um, a few of the competitors make a straight 50 and a lot of those uh, just like 
this uh, Snoko were considered in the industry like a, a conventional or a, a premium. Oh, oh that was good. Cool. Storman. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> so, um, but sorry about that. Are your pants still clean? Yeah, we're getting a little bit of a, we're getting a good North Carolina storm here. It's been going on for an hour, but the worst of it's coming over now. I apologize. That one is, that was, <laughs> that was pretty close. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, you know, I don't want anyone to, to say, oh, well, I don't like a dual viscosity. So when you see dual viscosity oil that's rated like a 20W50 in this case, it's still uh, under its hot measurement or temperature, it's still a 50 viscosity oil. So, you know, it's just off, you know, it's a 20 when it's cold, but it still has to perform and, you know, operate, so to speak, like a straight SAE 50 oil. So, and um, a lot of these oils from, you know, that vintage era are starting to be labeled as conventional or your heavy duties. Um, if you look at compared to like the synthetic blends of today's world or like the full synthetics. So, but um, this, this will be a good one. And this one, I don't know if you can blow that up. You can see on the um, typical properties now, diesel list there is a little different, but TBN is always um, listed on diesel engine oil. So the TBN on this Sunoco is a nine. So that would be considered on, on the higher end, you know, back in the day. So um, what's a good number or the benchmark number or? So, you know, number? it's a good question, Doug. So two to 15 normal diesel engine oil is typically six to 14. Most of them averaged in the nine to 11, especially in the uh, railroad engine oils. They were typically, you know, nine to 11 always. So uh, the majority of them you're going to see are nine. I know like, and it, it's not saying it's good, bad, or indifferent, but like the Shell Rotella, their T1, which is their straight SAE 50, um, I believe that's down around 7.5 TBN. You know, but it's also, remember, it's rated on base oil and additives. So, and everyone's chocolate chip cookie, you know, it's, they got a spec and then a recipe, but they make it a little different either way. So, in uh, not saying seven's better than 10 or, you know, whatever, there's a lot of variables, but back in the day, um, a lot of people referenced the higher quality performing oils with a higher TBN number. So today, well, if, they, if in our discussions in the past, you referenced, you know, certain certain oils have a range, and it, if the Sunoco is more of a specific number. They're a little more consistent than. Yeah. So a lot of um, there's a lot of brands out there, especially in racing oil. So, and I think we we're referring to so like the zinc package in racing. Some of the um, competing brands you'll see a pick on mobile they have uh their parts per million so their zinc is you know 1690 for instance it's the same then you'll see a competing brand that'll have their zinc and it'll say 1300 to 1700 parts per million so you know what is it am i getting oil this one time that's got 1300 parts per million zinc or am i getting on the high side so any of the major brands and, and some of the minor brands up there that are good quality oils, you know, they're, it's consistency. They're, you know, they're buying their base oils, the same, the same. They're buying their additives, the same, the same. If there's any alteration, they'll stop making oil, the, the big players. You know, it's just not worth the integrity or quality if they have something wrong, you know. And people may not know all the, you know, chemistry and all the big words and terms, but, People do um, notice if something changes right off the bat. If that if that oil that they're used to using for years, they pour out and it's just slightly off on color, they they'll absolutely pick that out. I mean, I have people ask me all the time. So, and that really can simply be just a little bit difference in the base or additive from their normal products. It'll change the color of the oil slightly, but people are in tune to that. So, like, hey, what, what's going on in my oil? You know, I know it's so is, that part, is that part of the reason that some some like in the racing where they color the oil? Is it is that kind of cover uh, that up if there's inconsistencies? 
No, that's not a band aid to cover that up whatsoever. So, like with Champion, you know, their signature oil or colors blue. Um, they actually colored theirs blue because blue means royalty and prestige. And so that kind of represents quality and performance. So, you know, obviously royal purple, um, you know, they color it royal purple a lot of them be basically because of the name, you know. Um, years ago, they would color, and they still do. So if you go over to non pulling stuff, like if you go to, you know, up in your area, Doug, snowplow oil. Yeah. They color snowplow oil different color than transmission oil. Transmission oil is typically always red. Um, you know, so they basically did that in case you had a leak. You could tell, you know, hey, my snowplows, is it my snowplow or my transmission or what? You know, so they, you know, they color oils a lot of times for troubleshooting, but there's no rhyme or reason for motor oils for color. There's, they, they don't do it to band aid or mask anything. It's just more of a, a novelty, you know. I, I believe Schaefer's is a green, more of a greenish. And there's a lot of competitors that have different colored oils. So, but, um, yeah, this Sunoco one be a good one. It's a good quality oil. Um, you know, we stock that and it's, uh, you know, over Premier, if you use Beer Money Pulling Team promo, you get 15% off. And BMPT. And I know a lot of people, it's getting the end of the season and stuff. And we get that. We know that. But now it's kind of a, a planning stage. You know, you get PRI in December. And then, you know, we don't have a lot of downtime anymore in motorsports. So. And testing um, too. I know a lot of people won't use a product till they can run it through the dyno. Yeah, exactly. How's so, the time? This product is available in gallon jugs and barrels, correct? Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Barrels are coming. They're coming. Yep. We have a few in stock right now, um, and we have more coming. Um, you know, and don't forget. You know, we're just not racing high performance oil. We're a full bumper to bumper lubricant distributor. So, I mean, as far as like the starting fluids you know, brake cleans, anything you would need for, you know, the, the pulling team or motorsports team and, you know, back home at the farm or the shop or anything, we have all that as well too. So, but um, yeah, so the next one, any, any questions on the Sunoco product? Kenzie shaking her head. No, all right, so, be very popular tonight. Yeah, it's a lot going on, right? A lot going on. So um, so the next one is the classic blue flame. So this, this is an interesting one. So, um, a lot of people know, uh, diesel motorsports, um, Ron Knox runs that series, been a pretty good, nice series for a lot of years. So Ron is, uh, you know, uh, resides in Kansas over Kansas city area. And years ago, uh, Ron came. So Ron's diesel motorsports series, if, if uh, not everyone's familiar, they do a lot of diesel drag. Um, that's what it started out as. And now they do, you know, the dyno trailer and, um, you know, now they have truck and tractor pulling as well for some of his events. So, but Ron came to champion back in the day and said, Hey, do you guys have a high performance or a racing kind of style uh, diesel engine? And really nobody kind of did. And so you know, the folks at Champion and the engineers said, we don't, but give us a little bit of, you know, give us a few days in a week and we'll, you know, we'll blend something up and let you try it. So um, that's when Blue Flame came to life, was actually for that. And it was a pretty good um, primary oil and sponsor for that series for quite a few years. But the classic Blue Flame um, is just, you know, it's a 1540 viscosity and it's nothing more than a uh, CH4, CI4 spec, just like the Sunoco 2050. But what they did is they used some of the um, premium additives like the thermal um, viscosity stabilizer. That's a polymer additive they use in the Champion Racing Oil. But if you notice what guys liked about this, we've talked about TBN quite a bit, neutralizing acid. If you look at this spec, this has a TBN number of 14. So it's at the very high end. 15 is the max. So this oil here is kind of a hybrid kind of speak. It's got race oil technology as far as additives and esters and polymers, um, you know, in the in the chemistry of the, the typical CH4, C, you know, CI4. 
So this this is a good this is a great oil and it's been very good for us. It has limitations. So when I say that with the 40 viscosity, when you get into the bigger bearing clearances and some of the looser engines, this failure point is you can't maintain oil pressure. So that's you know a lot of reason why. And this is a perfect example why in the pulling world. Um, teams go up to like the straight 50 or straight 60 and sometimes 70 in the racing oil um, because it's got the high zinc and, you know, it's got the higher viscosity to maintain oil pressure. So, but that also is a nice kind of plug or add in for the 2050 Sunoco because that's technically a 50 viscosity oil. So, but um, they're getting uh, the mono grades are starting to, be a little bit scarce because all the new technology. So um, that's something to look, you know, keep an eye on for the future. But, but this uh, blue flame has been a great oil. Um, this is actually blue in color just to kind of coincide with champions blue racing oil color. But um, you know, we have, uh, you know, on the street, the, the, everybody likes to blow black smoke all over everybody or crank the boost up. I mean, this oil will handle it. It's built to, you know, take that uh, high boost and, and uh, really controls the alkalinity or the acid buildup really good. So but, um, we stock this too, and this is available. I, st- I think you can still get it in drums, but I know it comes, I don't think it comes in quarts anymore, to be honest, with some of the newest changes. It comes in four by one gallons, and you can get it in a drum too. So, but um, other than that, um, that's kind of our, Diesel engine oil, you know, quick version. Um, there's so much about diesel oil. It's it's just a unique product and one of the most harsh things or, you know, happened in an engine in, in the business. But, um, you know, that's kind of the, uh, the summary 101. And again, if you're interested in any products, um, check out Premier Lubricants website or the Beer Money, beermoneypullingteam.com. Click on Premier Lubricants, and then at checkout, in the promo code, enter BMPT for 15% off of your order. Yeah, uh, if anyone wants any of the documents or product data sheets or, you know, they want more information, uh, just let me know. I'll, I'll email you, you know, whatever you want. And if you have questions on the side, um, you know, contact me anytime. I mean, I'm available all the time, so... But uh, there's lots to cover. You know, we're just trying to hit the basics. By no means am I an expert or, you know, petroleum engineer. But just uh, if we highlight the basics and, you know, talk so people understand, it's kind of our goal a of, here. A lot know? of people don't think oil is oil. And it's yeah. You know, hanging out with you for two years. I've learned a lot. And that's why I it, thought this would be good for people. It is good. And you're spot on, Doug. I mean, we hear it all the time, you know, oh, it's just oil or oil is oil. And there's, yeah, you know, today's technology, most oils are generally pretty good, but there's, there's some very extreme differences from, and it's all application driven too. You know, what are you doing with it? You know, you're, you're not gonna, you know, you're not going to go down to AutoZone and get some, you know, cheap brand or tractor supply diesel engine oil throw up in your, you know, in your tractor and, hope you get the best results, you know, right. so, but, but uh, yeah, um, you know, we're working on, you know, one of the things that I think this is off topic for tonight, but uh, 80% starting fluid, even 50% starting fluid. Uh, there's, you know, we're starting to see where, you know, in the industry, there's not big demand for that over in the polar world. Yeah. They drink this stuff. So it's kind of cool, but, um, we carry that. We're going to monitor that. We're going to have, you know, we can stock a good volume of that in the warehouse. And uh, we're looking at uh, the can size. It's been brought to my attention by several people, no names, Doug, um, that the seven ounce cans are more popular than the 11 and 15 ounce cans. And rightfully so. Um, we've talked about it throughout the summer and um, they're just easy, more manageable and, and, uh, easier to control the mist well, and it takes it takes so much pressure to get that product out of a big can that it can be hard to control yeah yeah i'm just speaking from experience on that yeah and you're spot on too <laughs> yeah 
it, it does. It takes to get the, the fluid or, you know, out of the bottom. It's, it's got a little bit of, you know, zip behind it. And, you know, a lot of times when you get down half can or whatever, it's kind of feels like it's just dripping out a little bit. You're wasting it. So, but uh, we're looking at that right now. Um, having that manufactured in a seven ounce smaller can, you know, for, you know, 2024. Right. But um, yeah, if anyone's got any questions, if I miss something or, just, you know. Yeah. Just reach out to myself, uh, Doug at beer money pulling team.com or uh, Facebook on messenger. You know, I can relay messages to Scotty as well. Scotty's on Facebook. So he'd be on messenger and yep. the website. You know, they'll take uh, inquiries as well. So, yeah, and we do, you know, just for um, everyone's reference, you know, we sell totes and drums and pails. I mean, we sell the only thing that we're not a premier uh, lubricants just being new bulk, you know, pump off truck. But, you know, we're talk, we're going to get there, but that's probably the only weak link right now. I mean, there's ways around it, but, um, you know, totes are very popular around the shops, the farms all that stuff. And, uh, we consider a tote and they're typically 275 now gallons. We consider that basically bulk, uh, or bulk pricing. So, but, um, yeah, we can, uh, you know, that's, what's nice about a smaller company compared to corporate U S you know, we're a little more flexible, you know, you get the one-on-one -on -one attention, not saying anything wrong about corporate America, but I mean, everyone has their own opinion, right? So, but, uh, no, thank you. Appreciate it. And, um, if you guys want a topic for next week yeah. or Doug, if you have one, just let me know. Please. If this is, this is for uh, consumer interaction, this is not just for us. So if you have questions or want to hear you know, a topic, reach out to one of us and let us know, and we will attempt to address it. So sounds good. Okay. Till next week, Tuesday night, 6 o'clock Central Time. Tech Talk Tuesday with Scotty Tuati. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Talk to you later. See ya. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye.